coming up on the official Celtic FC podcast. The first part of our interview with Dante and Jules from Scottish rock band Gun as they chat about their new album, Hombres, as well as all things Celtic. Wherever we are in the world, wherever we're gigging, wherever we're touring, we're always looking for the scores, we're always looking for... This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Hello and welcome to the official Celtic FC podcast, the podcast that brings you all the news and information from inside Celtic Park with players past, present and future as well. Now for, for those of you who are watching this podcast, you might be looking at my guests today and thinking, I don't remember them as former <laughs> Celtic players, but we also sometimes bring in some uh, ce- celebrity Celtic fans, guys who have uh, achieved something else in their career but remain Absolute passionate mm. Celtic fans, and that is certainly the case today for my two guests, Jules and Dante from the band Gun, one of the finest rock bands that Scotland's ever produced. Welcome mm. to the podcast, guys. Thanks, oh, Thanks yeah, for having amazing. us. Thanks for having us. Now, we're going to be talking all things Celtic. There is a new album that's just coming out, Ombre's, the ninth studio album from Gun. We'll talk about that as well, mm. although yeah. beforehand you said we'll just talk <laughs> all <laughs> things <laughs> Celtic. All things Celtic, absolutely. But what I was... The first thing I was going to say, actually, and partly because of the, the T-shirt you're, you're wearing, Joe, straight uh-huh. out of Carlton, uh-huh. and you guys mm-hmm. are Carlton born and bred, mm-hmm. and I was trying to think, is, is there any other Scottish band that uh, was born and brought no. up closer to Celtic Park than you guys? I don't think there is. No, I, no. I, I, absolutely. You know, the only people I could think about is maybe Jim, Jim Kerr, Charlie Birch, but they were the, garbles. No, they were more garbles. Yeah. Uh, Probably, but we are the closest to us. <laughs> we went, we to both went to St Mary's, obviously. Uh, it was yeah. Where Tommy, Tommy Burns was a prisoner, so. Yeah. Uh, um, um, but, um, no, no, it's uh, uh, it's great because, you know, all the games uh, that Celtic played at weekends through the week, we could always, we just, it was just a walk away to the, you know, mm-hmm. just to the stadium and stuff and go and watch the, you know, your beloved Celtic. Just yeah. amazing. S- supporting your local team. Oh, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 you know, wherever we are in the world, wherever we're gigging, wherever we're touring, we're always looking for the scores. We're always looking for, you know, we're, we're really passionate mm. about it. It's, we've been steeped in Celtic, you know, so yeah. from where we come from and, and you know, and the people, mm-hmm. you know, our pa- pals and about us, you know, we just, just diehard Celtic fans, you know. Yeah, now I mentioned this this album that I've got a vinyl copy of it. It's just out now. Um, it's obviously available in vinyl, various other formats mm-hmm. or any of the streaming platforms. Your ninth studio album, mm-hmm. uh, that's an impressive uh, tally in itself. Mm-hmm. But then I'm obviously looking back, and I don't know whether that's when you start saying, you know, I think the band was formed in 1987. The first album uh, came out in 1989. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's a, a long time. Long but, time. But I think that's an impressive achievement because you think yeah. of how few bands stand the, the test of time well, so I think definitely we feel you know we've been very lucky in being able to do that and being able to release albums after that you know and having that opportunity to do that because it's very difficult these days to you know to, for, for young bands to get out there and, and, and promote and make albums mm-hmm. and stuff like that so we feel mm-hmm. really privileged in that respect but this is you know this album I think I mean dare I say it's probably I mean, we've still got that hunger and the energy in this band, and especially when it comes to songwriting. So I don't think this is that far off, like, from Taking On The World. It's like a continuation of Taking On The World, yeah. and it has modern elements in it. But I think when you hear that album, it's, it's got, like, bags of energy, and it's, yeah. it's just, you know, it was just so much fun to actually record it. And I think, I think you know, the Dante Men's were lucky. Well, you, you create your own luck, you know what I mean? You don't, mm. it doesn't come to you, you know? And, We've been really passionate about it for, from day one of of really trying to make the best music that we can possibly mm-hmm. can for, for our fans and hopefully cross over to other fans who, who might not have known the band and stuff like that. I think mm-hmm. it's just really important and we really, really love what we do. So we've built a, 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 a fan base that, you know, when, when we released the race leg, they're all... At least yeah. the record, they're all out there buying it and supporting the band, and mm-hmm. and I think when the hunger you start to lose that, you mm-hmm. know, in the studio, then it's it's maybe time to call it a day. But we just love being in the studio and mm-hmm. recording uh, music and getting out gigging and playing, you know, and it's a uh, it's a passion, you know. We absolutely love it, you know, and, mm-hmm. yeah. and you know, long may it continue. You know, we'll always look to the next year. You know, hopefully we do well this year, and then hopefully. 
better the following year. Because yeah. I think you make a good point because th- there's probably elements along the way your career where there's, there has been moments of luck. Yeah, but that oh, doesn't sustain oh, you because you know people aren't going to put your records out just for any sentimental reasons. Yeah. It has to yeah, stack has up to, against yeah. what you've done before, but oh, also yeah. it has to stack up against what's out just now. So yeah. to that, to your point, when you listen to this, mm-hmm. and you know it's 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 probably a classic gun album. Yeah, I mean, there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of oh, real walking so, tunes. Very much so, oh, wouldn't it? Um, and we're lucky enough actually to get it featured on you know um, upcoming Samuel Jackson movie. Damaged. Um, there's two songs that uh, that's going to be in the movie. Um, I think it's kind of released in the states now, but um, but at the end of the year, I think they're looking for a UK uh, release of the of the movie. So so I can't wait to see it. You know. Um, mm-hmm. But no, it's. I think the songs, you know, themselves. I mean, I'm very very critical of my own vocal. You know, and I've always been to the point where, like, I used to like track my vocals which means like doubling your vocals to make it sound thicker to make it more effective right. but with this album there's not well there's not any of that hardly any of that and and for me that i do not like the sound of my own voice i've actually really enjoyed listening to this album and i think it's the best i've ever sung before you know and for me to say that like i'm my own worst critic you know um is something really special for me you know and and I can't wait for everybody to hear it. Yeah, that's quite nice actually to be able to to, to be in that position to say that because yeah. what amazed me when I was listening to it and I was lucky enough just to get a wee kind of sneak preview of it is that you know that way after so many years, you you, you, you Jules, you mentioned right. the the passion, but also at some point I'm guessing you guys must just be sitting there and you have to start that creative process of thinking of because mm-hmm. you've written so many songs over the year, but mm-hmm. still to be able to come up with new songs and well, new that's ideas. It. That's so. exactly it. Pull the hungers. Yeah, yeah, still there. Like, like you know, it's it's just you know. I think I think even when we you think of the bands when we when it came out, maybe like Texas came out the same time as us and stuff. Like, oh, we were stable mates and stuff like management and the same management and stuff. But a lot of bands had, at that point there were so many Glasgow bands getting signed, you know, and and mm-hmm. a lot of them kind of just withered away and stuff like that. But we just kept at it. I just I don't know. It's just a passion that you get for it, you know. I, I always look at like a football team or a football player, or you know, you only get a, you only get out of what you put in it, you, what you put in it, and and if you keep trying, if you keep working and and enjoy what you're doing, because we, you know, we'll never be multi millionaires, <laughs> but but we are, we just really love what we do, you know, and mm. I can wake up every day, I uh, go mm. to the studio, go work with Dante, go into the studio, work, mm. with, you know, I can afford, we can afford to do that, and it's it's it's. It's great, you know. Uh, you, you've just got to keep keep that keep that up. You know, yeah, nobody needs to tell me or or him. We we just know we need to go into yeah. the studio because <clears throat> it's just part of what we love doing. Because there's also a thing, and at any time, you know, that way when you go to a gig, and I know you guys, there's there's plenty of in store promotions for this album, yeah. but also you're going to be playing for any Celtic fans mm-hmm. that are watching or listening in Spain. There's going to be a lot of gigs in Spain yeah. Yeah. coming up in May, and then later in the year, there's a UK tour, tour playing the Barrowlands in December mm-hmm. the fourteenth. It's any time, and especially somewhere like the Barrowlands, you go, and there's always something, and, and you you'll be able to tell me what this is like because I, I love it being in the crowd and that atmosphere. But Oof. for you guys to be there, you know, a stone's throw from where you were brought up, mm-hmm. it's your home gig, it's your home town, yeah. and that response. I mean, the, the, that's great. I, I can imagine that there can be no greater feeling. Oh, it's amazing. We, we did we did it just last year, there, yeah, didn't we? We yeah. just kind of yeah. we you know we were at like you know mum's house, you know, and. And then I think it was like quarter, quarter to seven, quarter to eight or something like that, I think like that. And we just like, do you want to walk down? And we just kind of walked down. And it's right. weird just walking from my mum's house, from my to, the house to the bar. It's like to, two, you, to your own gate. Yeah. That's amazing. Three or four, <laughs> who, can, about, who else can do that? It's about a three or four minute walk also. That's so amazing. So you're just walking down and you're just like that. This is just amazing. Because yeah. we've done it so many times. It's just amazing to come down and, and then you're going into this, you know, into this, uh, into this gig, the Barlands, you know, in front of 2,000 people. What, what, are, that's what, you know, what Dante's saying, you know, so me and him, we're walking down, and it's maybe around about, what? Yeah, about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah, about 8 o'clock. A lot of pundits are coming in, but we go through the back door. Mm-hmm. But when we're walking, it's just me and him just chatting about the gig and mm-hmm. talking about, right, well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll open up this song and we'll yeah. try, and, you know, and it's just me and him yeah. just standing, and then when you get into the venue, 
and you can start feeling that atmosphere and you can start it's building it's up a building up building up and you're like this is just incredible you know does that take you back then to just being wee guys when you're just off. When well you, I used to go down there that dream of I used to go down there and the pug, play the puggies <laughs> like when I was like get all my pocket uh, pocket money Jules used to give me pocket money actually <laughs> for, for doing his uh, jeans iron and <laughs> jeans and stuff like that <laughs> that's what I used to do so I used to get all my pocket money and I'd Go down the Barris on a Saturday morning when it used to be absolutely rammed. Yeah. You know, and um I'd go down and play the fruit machines and then and then yeah, so doing that and then like years later you're just going to play yeah, play we're, gigs. We were born and bred it kill uh, and and the barris was great, you know, we were down at um Dick Barton's pool hall and just hang about there with some of other pals, you know, and uh, it was great. It's just a great childhood memory, you know, and, and Everything was Celtic, you know, everything, all my pals and, you know, it, it was just been hanging about the no, barras. And obviously all the Celtic pubs down there as oh, well. Right, yeah, hanging about the barras and stuff like that when we were kids and growing yeah. up and <coughs> my mum would take us down there at, at, at Christmas Eve, you know, all that. You know, just all those great memories, you know. Uh, you know, it's always a special. Remember, it, remember Bird's Bar and stuff like that ah, as well. Yeah, amazing. Sorry, amazing. used to uh, used to Absolutely frequent brilliant. there. I suppose it's that <laughs> kind of you, you get that you get that sense of just the the pride of where you're from. Where you're from. And, and I wonder as well whether part of the reason for your success and longevity is the fact that you kind of keep that humility and you never forget where you yeah. come from. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, like. Who we spoke about, like Tommy, you know, like Tommy Burns. Tommy Burns is a superstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Celtic, you know, he was, you know, he, Tommy Burns was green and white all the way through. He's blood, his heart, everything, you know. But when you met him, you couldn't, mm-hmm. he could, you couldn't meet a more down to earth guy, mm-hmm. just like you, I, like anybody out there. He was just. It rubs off on you. Uh, yeah. That rubs I just, those that... words, those words he always, in that interview, he's just, I'm just a. Celtic would just got lucky. He made his own luck. He he was a phenomenal footballer, you know, and and people loved him, you know. And I just think be humble, you know, take your success, great doing it, but then you're just a Kelton boy, you know, and and, and mm-hmm. that's that's the way we always look at. No well, living where, in the Kelton actually, yeah, can you, no you're where, you're well told. <laughs> no <matter laughs> Keep your feet in the ground. <laughs> no matter where we are in the world, if we could be in Portugal, America, whatever, we talk about the Kelton. Mm. We talk about our upbringing, we talk mm-hmm. about our football team, we talk about, you know, mm-hmm. the passion and everything else that that, that got us to here, you know. Because yeah. uh, I like that about you guys as well, that, and, it, and it's, I think Scotland's different now that, like, you know, people, if they, whatever team they support, they're, they're more comfortable talking about it, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, because maybe for a few years people are, you know, they just, if, sure you, if you weren't involved in football, you just didn't talk about football, but mm-hmm. you guys have always... Pin your colours to the mask, <laughs> I and, and so. which, which I think is the, is the uh, right thing to do because if you're a Celtic fan, mm-hmm. you're a Celtic fan. Oh, mm-hmm. I would never ever hide. Uh, yeah, know, yeah. Never, that's my team forever and ever and ever, you know, <laughs> until the day I die, you know. Uh, but no, I, I just, you know, that's what so we were brought up, you know, um, support your team, and, and that's, I, you know, I don't, I, I totally build, you know, no matter what, you should always. Mm-hmm. Support a Ranger fan, Hearts, mm-hmm. Aberdeen. Yeah. We are Celtic fans, and we are big Celtic fans. And, yeah, you know it means so much to us. You know, um, supporting that team. When we were on our way up to the studio here, and obviously we stopped it. We were inside the stadium getting some photographs, and I kind of, and the guy who was doing the photographs is a lot younger than us, yeah. and, and I kind of felt like we were three old guys because suddenly <laughs> we, we were looking at the house, how great the stadium was, but then we started reminiscing about the fact we were lucky enough <laughs> to have gone to see Celtic yeah. and stand in the jungle, and, yeah. and those were great days. Mm-hmm. They were of their time, but it, it was a special. So I quite like having that contrast. If you can remember back to being a wee yeah. guy and going getting pulled over the turnstile, yeah, yeah, and sitting your dad sitting you up in the bar oh. and stuff. Absolutely, but you wouldn't change from mm. you know the way yeah. oh, the stadium no. looks now. Oh, oh it's incredible! Now. It's state of the art when you look at that. I mean, I mean, we talk about you know, you go and you play a big gig, you know. That's going to that's, funny, that's a good watching reference. There. What must that be like when you're uh, you know, know walking out in that? You know, like, like a real Celtic diehard fan. You know, I've like a Paul McStay. Even or Peter yeah, Grant. listen, even just walking out. Into that empty stadium, I get I, I get the same sort of awe that we would gone on stage in front of two thousand people at Glasgow That's Bar. Like, just walking into that empty stadium, I'm just like, it takes yeah. your breath away yeah, just yeah, seeing yeah. it, you know. But the amazing. good old days, you know, in the jungle and everything else, they they were again 
growing up and stuff and kind of some of the you know some of the smells and all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny whenever I spoke to some some former players especially like guys that say when they've made their debut and you, you know the first time they're told you know the first time you score a goal just run to that jungle oh and you know mm. take that acclaim because that means you're here that's you've arrived so uh, absolutely you know and you, you used to see it with mixed day or you know <clears throat> burns or you know macari or any of those ones running that jungle when they when they'd scored you know f fantastic fantastic memories you know because right. uh, i wonder as well you know that way and again we were talking about tommy burns god rest them and mm. how you guys all went to his his debut mm -hmm. he was a kind of hero of the Carlton oh, he was a Celtic boy then absolutely. but then I wonder if there's you know there's there's maybe some over the years there's been some young men and women who have like wanted to go into music and but it's kind of they see mm -hmm. you you're just you're part of that community and mm -hmm. look what you've done but you yeah. never know if you've inspired mm -hmm. people to go on and, and do something because uh, you know if you see it you can be it oh yeah. absolutely we've, we've had loads of people come up to us and you know like uh -huh. You're just boys for Calvin. How, how how did you, you know how 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 did you go from to achieve your success from, and it's just a passion, you know. I think I yeah, think, I think know, I think up. my I think I would also say that like, you know, the the fans that we have obviously of the demographic of our age and stuff like that, but they bring the, the, the young sons, the young daughters and stuff like that to the show, aspiring to become a musician and stuff like that. And they're like, they come up to you and their dad's with them and stuff like that. I've been, you know, my dad's obviously got me into your band and stuff yeah. like that. And I absolutely love, all, you know, all, all your songs. And it's like, God, this this is unbelievable what you think this, you know. And for somebody to take, you know, I don't know, um, just that wee bit of, you know, hope and stuff like that. And wanting to become a musician, if you can help somebody like that, it's, it means a lot to us, you know. Yeah. I, I look at it, how I got into it, you know. And what, what really inspired me to get into music, I, I saw ACDC for the very first time in Glasgow uh, at the City Halls. It was their very first gig. Right. And I never knew nothing about them. I just went along and I was like, I was 13 or 14, I went along and I was just, I just couldn't take it in. I was just absolutely mm. blown away with this wee guy. Where had, you, had you started playing the guitar by then? Or? I hadn't started no, playing guitar no. at all. I was, into, I, was into, I was into like David Bowie, T Rex, yeah. you know, all the kind of glam stuff, Sweet Glitter Band, all that kind of stuff. But when I first saw ACD, I never seen any of those bands. But when I first saw ACDC live, and that this wee guy, where you know, in a school uniform, you know, I, and I, I went back to school and. I, you know, that, I think it was a Friday or Saturday, I went to school on the Monday and I was just, I just couldn't stop telling anybody about, about this band I had just seen, you know, and how, and I, I was so blown mm. away with it that I thought, uh, mm. I'm, I'm going to try and play a guitar just to... But that's that inspiration, what, isn't and it? And that's yeah. what made it mm. kind of, I thought, oh God, I really like this instrument, I really like playing it, and I just played it for hours and hours and hours because I was playing football and stuff like mm. that, you know, at that age as well, you know, and, and I just thought, no, this is this is what yeah. I want to do, you know, and and I kept at it and kept at it, you know, and and formed bands along the way, and you know, and you know, and then just kind of worked my way up to try and achieve mm -hmm. a record deal like a footballer would try to achieve a mm -hmm. a contract with yeah. a football <clears throat> a football team, you know. Because there's always that thing, you know. Sometimes they say footballers want to be rock stars, rock stars want to be footballers. Yeah. But, but there is a yeah, parallel because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that way you're saying. And I love again. It's another thing I love about going to gigs now that you see. So when you see Johnny Marr in the right. Barrowlands, so I remember him back in the Smiths the Smith, forty yeah. years ago. Yeah. But and he'll play some Smith songs. But again, it's like people my age. But it's the next generation and then two generations so it's young ones yep. so it's getting passed on and it's the same with football that you, you know it's something that you pass you want to pass these things on yeah, because oh, to your point the good things the passions the, and you you know they're special to you and you want so, oh, absolutely. so you pass Celtic mm -hmm. on to the next generation you know, the same way as you know yeah, gun fans so my boy no, uh, yeah, yeah. He's a, my boy oh, Ruben he's is a Celtic fan now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Celtic fan now, you know. It's you just, know but, he's like phoning you up and texting you and stuff like that. Oh, I bet he never had a choice. But he has became like, yeah. like real sort of yeah. diehard and, and it's but it's great to pass that like on. That, yeah. Like Dante said, you know, the, the amount of young people that are coming to our shows now, you know, because uh, of you know, the, the parents, parents bringing their, on it. I mean, some, some are Does that make you up? 
up your game in a way because uh, to, to your point earlier on that you know this is as good an album you're as proud of this yeah, as the first uh-huh. album but also you're also appealing to a different audience you need yeah. to you need to be doing something it's different, very different content, something uh, contemporary it definitely well, it's got that sort of um, ele- those elements of sort of yeah. you know but it's but it, it's the energy that it's that's that it has and I think that'll connect with mm-hmm. um with the young fans and you know I, I, as I said it's it's probably my most favorite album to listen to and to have sung on mm-hmm. um I th- yeah I, th- I think I think you've always got to try and be a step ahead you know of 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 your music you know where like what's the next album going to be sounding like you know we'll, we'll still have its roots we'll still have the yeah. big guitars but We'll probably take it another kind of direction, but keep the same identity, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I suppose it's like football managers, different formations, this formation, try this, try that. And you've always got to kind of stay, stay a step a- ahead in, in the music. And, and, and I suppose that's the exciting thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You're yeah. Never, you, uh, you two are never going to get together one day and go, oh, I can't, oh, we've got to write another song. It's like... <laughs> that, 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 you know, that would be the time to give it up. But, yeah, but that's yeah. the thing, if you're still excited. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, well... This record, you know, is just about to come out, blah, blah, but we've got about five, six, seven new ideas ready to go back into the studio when, right. when we're ready to mm-hmm. do it, when we get the time to do it. we always got to keep going, keep working, keep working at it, you know. Uh, I know. We're, no, no, uh, we're no Lennon and McCartney or <laughs> Jack and we're the Richards, so we've got to really work at it. Because one, one of the songs, I think Falling, that came Falling, out, you'd, yeah. you'd brought out an EP. Yeah earlier on this yeah. year so people would have got a, a sense of some of the songs and yeah, yeah. How, so, so for example that song how did how does that come about that song or who, who who's that's the inspiration funny, for that right so that's a funny story <laughs> <laughs> but we kind of i think it was i think What's it was near i think uh, <laughs> i think it was near the end of the pandemic you know i think we're still under lockdown a, a bit and then joe's came up to the house because so obviously you know what only allowed Two or three people in at your house at that point, but but anyway, he would be up every day anyway. So he came <laughs> up. He goes, "I've got this great idea to let you hear." Now he's just playing it and let you know on acoustic guitar. So he had the the verse of it and the chorus of it, and he just played it in the room. And this is back at my mum's house where mm-hmm. we've got a wee studio. So it's like you know in the Carlton, and um, and I goes, "That's that's a really good idea, Joe. I, I really." like that or i love it actually and then i goes look would you mind if i just work on it myself <laughs> and and i can remember him going like you do like it do you, you do like it i goes like i love it so joseph doesn't know you know no, mind old, it, I'm old I, 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 he's not really good with technology and uh, anything computer wise or anything <laughs> and i kind of like that paul i like prefer him to, just to work on ideas if it's just coming Acoustically, because if it comes acoustically, if you if you can have a song, you know, f- through playing just acoustic or even piano or whatever, that's all you need. That's that's a sign of a good song, mm-hmm. a really good song. But everything else that comes in after it, the drums or the keyboards and stuff like that, and all the parts putting it together, that comes afterwards. But if you've got the nucleus of a good song there, and that's why I don't let him use any computer stuff. <laughs> Not that you'd want to use it anyway, oh. but. So he, so I goes, now listen, please just leave me alone to work on it. And he goes, are you sure? He goes, you've got the verse and the chorus, I'll make it build. And and that was, I honestly, like, mm-hmm. I had it finished by about four or five in the afternoon. And he came back up to the house. So I had to let him go, because I don't like him when he sits there and listens to what I'm doing. I just like to work on it myself yeah. and then, and made it. And and I was got just so into it. And it was to when you find th- you when you find something that's really good song wise, you can't help but just like pushing ahead mm-hmm. with it. You you just want to get it because you want to hear it as a as a song. And did the demo. He came up to the house and he goes, "Wow, this is this is amazing. Mm-hmm. This is this is exactly what I wanted to hear." It goes, "Well, this is the way I had heard it in my head." And for me, my inspiration from it was um, the Johnny Cash cover version of Heart. Right. Yeah. The, just not so much the actual, it's just the way it builds in the song. It's just amazing. I've always loved it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's where the inspiration. So the demo version doesn't differ too much from the yeah. album version. Actually. And I've, I've always, you know, I've always wanted a sort of writing a song that 
and just builds, builds, builds. It has the highs and the lows and it drops and, you know. And the start of it, I was kind of listening to, because there's a wee page of guitar part at the beginning of it. And if you listen to, like, Sailing, uh, uh, was it Rod Stewart's mm-hmm. on I Am Sailing? Uh, the start of that song, it's just like a wee guitar part. And that gave me the idea of the intro of the start of it, you know. And then I just kind of worked on it from there, you know. But um, but you listen to all different music and different ideas and, you know, different musicians, different bands. You you, you, get, you get a wee sparkle uh, mm-hmm. when you're writing songs, you know. Like, sort of that thing, that, as I said, that working on that song, it was like, by the end of it, I was getting sort of the goosebumps just <laughs> yeah. in the demo. And I just, I love that. I love that feeling. You know. Well, listen, that's the, the perfect intro to a song. We're going to have a listen to follow now from Gun to see if you get goosebumps as well. <laughs> <laughs> Like we used to do 